Good afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture. In this special lecture on symbolic expression, we have with us Ms. Manisha, who is going to translate the language in sign, uh, into sign language. For today's lecture, the topic is sociological perspectives. So we know that the discipline of sociology studies social reality. Sociology is the science of society. Sociologists make an attempt to study social action, behavior, interaction and society all around. So therefore, different sociologists take on a different stand to look at that reality. Today, we will look into some of the major perspective that has been used in sociology to make sense of social reality. So we try to understand what is sociological perspective. So first we try to understand what is a perspective. A perspective means one's point of view. It is how object appears in the eye of the viewer, the choice of the context for opinions, beliefs and experiences. In simple words, each one of us can understand reality in our own way. How we interpret that reality, how we see the reality is a perspective that one individual has. Now, when a sociologist looks at the reality, they will look at it differently because it is the context in which an individual looks into the society. So, each one of us has our own way of getting into it. Now, there is where a commonsensical understanding would differ from a sociological perspective. A sociological perspective goes beyond what is obvious. So we men of the time go into the hidden meanings. We go into what is not obvious and that is what is a sociological perspective. Peter Berger has said that sociological perspective is seeing the general in the particular. Now in sociology, if we go back to the history of sociology, there are two ways of understanding society. One is the general in particular, that is, we study one particular society and arrive at a generalization. This was the methodology used by most of the classical sociologists. The other is to look for the particular in general, that is, you will be observing macro level social pro processes and try to arrive at a particular interaction, social behavior or social action. Similarly, C. Wright Mills in his work The Sociological Imagination tells us that we need to understand the relation between the personal trouble and the public issue. So each perspective of a sociologist has to be located in the context in which one is born, the social political milieu around them and also in terms of what were the major issues that were being handled at that point of time. To give us an example, we look into the discipline of sociology, which emerged at the time of industrial revolution. Large scale transformation was happening. So sociologists wanted to understand the nature of social change. In that context, most of them gave us the theory of evolution. The change of society from a simple society to a complex society. That could be a one way of looking into the changing nature of society. Now, after understanding what is a sociological perspective, the next thing is why do we need sociological perspective? So, the first reason is that it helps us to see the general in particular. So we have to kind of arrive at certain general pattern from particular experiences and the general pattern therefore will be used to compare society and even to forecast the kind of changes or the nature of society that we will go into it. The second reason is that sociological perspective help us to see strange in familiar. Many of our time, we listen and see around phenomena which appears to be very familiar. But 
a sociological investigation tells us a different story. For instance, many uh, we see that in temples or church, any place of religion, people go to worship. But then there are other reasons why one could go. With increasing reduction in space in urban areas, the temple or a pl religious place of worship can also be a place where people meet individuals. So that is something which is a kind of not familiar and this is what perspective tells us. The third reason is seeing individuality in social context. Here we need to see how the collective influences social behavior or individual behavior. In social sciences we have this dichotomy between the individual and collective and also what Anthony Giddin calls agency versus structure. So many a time certain practices are individual. It is not at par with the collective behavior. How do we then understand the individual versus the collective? The sociological perspective helps us to look at familiar surrounding in a fresh way. It encourages us to take a new look at the world we have just taken for granted. There are a lot of assumptions taken for granted. There are certain kind of mindset which goes on to create myth. Perspective helps us to understand this taken for granted. So there are certain ways, ideas which has been carried on for generation to generation. Sociologist needs to explore them, examine them, critically understand the relevance in the present context and perspectives help us to do that. The sociological perspective enables us to see society as temporary social product. So society is always in a flux, it's changing and perspective will help us understand this change and at the same time we'll understand that as society evolves, as society changes, institutions, organization, the relation between individuals are undergoing change and therefore perspectives also changes. How we looked at reality in the 1970s would be different from how we look at it in the 21st century. So logical perspective helps us to grapple with that change and therefore according to Peter Berger the first wisdom of sociology is that things are not what they seem. This is the imagination that sociologists have to develop. We need to go beyond this taken for granted. We need to go beyond what is obvious. We need to go beyond what is familiar and therefore it will help us to understand society in the new milieu, in the new social context. Now let us look into some of the perspective that has been part of the discipline of sociology since its inception. The first is positivist perspective. Now this positivist perspective or what is known as positivism was pioneered by August Comte who was the founder of the discipline of sociology and Emile Durkheim. Now both of them were trying to design or develop a science of society which would be similar to the positivist science or the natural sciences. And in that context they were trying to look at sociology in terms of objectivity, in terms of observation and comparative method. So the emphasis was on empirical observation. They believe that you observe reality you measure them, compare them and arrive at certain general laws. In regards to social world as an positive and that is why the term positive is, is there. It's an objective reality out there. You observe it, measure it, compare it and arrive at a certain generalization. The, if you look into Durkheim's positivism, he said, that everything around us is a social fact. There are certain ways of identifying a social fact and once it has been identified, it will help us to understand society. 
Now, let us look at the criticism of positivism. Positivism was criticized because it regarded social science in the same line as natural science, but it is different. Natural science is observing fauna, flora, animals in, in a laboratory. For social science, the entire society is a laboratory. So, it would be very difficult to arrive at certain part which is objective reality. Why? Because the meanings will change, the symbolic interaction will change. So, it has to be more in terms of understanding social action as it is interacted in everyday life. So, the critique of positivism came from interpretative sociologists. The interpretative sociologists, they said that so social reality cannot be quantified. You cannot quantify everyday interaction. You cannot quantify individual behavior. And therefore, going by positivism would lead to lot of abstraction. These generalized law will not apply to all society at every point of time. So, it would be kind of understanding another society with the law or generalization of one society as such. So, this criticism of positivism led to the understanding that there has to be value loaded understanding. Value neutrality in social sciences is difficult to arrive at. Why? Because objectivity can itself be interpreted in multiple ways. So, the context of social sciences is not value neutral. And therefore, the second perspective that we will we'll look into is the interpretative sociology. Now, the focus of interpretative sociology is to interpret social reality in terms of the meaning assigned by the individual. So, every reality, every social action has to be understood in terms of the people assigning certain meaning to that action. It kind of tries to capture a larger context and this will differ from society to society. So, what can come to be understood as cultural specificity? So, the positivist school of sociology were trying to focus on universal, uniform pattern, whereas interpretative sociology is trying to tell us the specific of each society and culture. So, the world has reality and each reality will have a different meaning. So, the interpretative sociology focus on analyzing the collective meaning constructed in everyday interaction. So, we do not go by certain fixed reality. We are not going to quantify reality. It is not possible to observe everything at the same time and arrive at a generalization. It will change from society to, to society with reference to space and time. Now, this interpretative sociology was advocated by Max Weber. His approach is kind of termed as Verste Hen. Verste Hen emphasizes on the meaningfulness of social action. So, each individual attaches subjective meaning and interprets those of the other. So, the interpretative perspective is concerned with developing a knowledge of social interaction from the point of view of meaning individual attributes to it. You know. So, to, to give a very quick example, we see a mob on the road or a crowd and maybe there is some argument going among individual. Many would arrive at an understanding that there is some kind of difference in opinion and people are arguing. Yet, other would think that it is a result of conflict between individual. So, we can interpret reality differently, the same reality, but we attach different meaning to it. So, that is kind of interpretative understanding. It is more oriented to a meaning, symbolic action rather than laws or generalization. 
So, interpretative sociology promotes the goal of greater mutual understanding and possibility of consensus among members of society. Now, even uh, interpretative sociology was criticized by a number of social scientists. On one point of criticism is that the interpretative paradigm, it is difficult to generalize. So, every society will have a specific understanding. So, how do we then arrive at a theoretical instance or how do we build a paradigm? So, if every instance is different, then there will be multiple theoretical position and it would be difficult to arrive at a scientific claim about the nature of society. The danger is that it is kind of rich every face to face interaction will differ, it is examined in detail, the result is more descriptive. So, what will kind of get missed out is explanatory or analytical trend. We would be more of the time engaged in giving a description and not be allowed to give a analytical understanding. So, where do we go from a particular observation to a general claim about society? So, from with those both the positivist and uh, interpretative sociology, we look into some of the perspective which has been used by sociologists. And the first that we look into is functionalist perspective. Now, this functionalist perspective was more or less used by the sociologist who believed in positivism and therefore, it would be Durkheim who would be kind of considered as belonging to the functional school. Now, what do the functionalist perspective do? As the term itself says, they want to understand the function of each part that make up the whole. So, the society can be divided as having different parts and each parts are interdependent. There is a relation between the all and all contribute to the functioning of a whole. So, functionalism considers society as a system of interconnected parts that work together in harmony to maintain a state of balance and social equilibrium. So, if we look into the terms balance, harmony, equilibrium, they are more concerned about the consensus, how society is ordered and how it will lead, lead to a social order which everybody is consenting to. Functionalists believe that society can exist as a whole as kind of interacted, interconnected with different parts and every individual contributes to the collectivity. Now, when we talk about the collectivity, the emphasis is given on the whole. Individual's agency kind of is considered as subordinate. The collective is more important. Here, when we look into the functionalism, we see that it is kind of understood in terms of positive function and negative functions. So, functionalists use the term functions and dysfunctions to describe the effect of social element. So, functional when they are positive contribution, it leads to stability, consensus and the reverse is dysfunctional. When any part has a negative consequence, it leads to conflict or it leads to the disbalance of order, it is referred as dysfunctions. So, obviously, some parts of the society will be functional, the other parts will be dysfunctional. So, functional is when we have harmony, we have order and dysfunctional when there is physical violence, there is conflict, loss of property. So, crime can be both functional and dysfunctional. Durkheim who is a functionalist says that crime is functional. Why? Because when a crime occurs, it leads to increase in the awareness and there is a kind of the punishment, the, the one who commits crime is not only punished, his family, his community is also punished. So, crime according to Durkheim 
can be functional in increasing the social cohesion the bond between the members of a society now the key proponent are herbert spencer emil durkheim talcott parson and robert morton robert morton gave the dis- difference between manifest function and latent function the manifest functions are those that are kind of evident and the let- latent are the hidden ones so durkheim being a functionalist studied the social solidarity how the complex division of labor in industrial society increases so- social solidarity in society now the criticism of functionalist is that it lays too much of emphasis on positive side a large amount of emphasis is on maintaining status quo and that could be kind of negating the idea that many a time conflict difference also leads to change in the social order so the next perspective is the conflict theory now the conflict theory comes in from the marxian analysis karl marx when he studied the materialist development of society argued that the difference between the two class would result in the change of the economic order once the economy order changes it leads to change in the so structure and culture of society so unlike the functionalist conflict are looking into social change they are looking into how a revolution can bring about a change in the structures of the society so conflict is also seen as functional here and therefore help us to see that inequality is a part of the social structure and the inequality can also lead to structure social reality so conflict theories are focusing on inequality competition and is kind of looking into social change as progressive for society so you know the key proponent of the conflict theory is karl marx and karl marx is trying to look into the materialistic growth of society his argument is that when change takes place the modes of production changes and the society would change from agriculture to industrial with the emergence of industrial society two classes that is those who have ownership of property and those who do not own property are kind of seen as contesting a conflict emerges between the two and this leads to a kind of a revolution which could kind of bring about a change in the structure of the society the conflict perspective has been criticized because it is too much of emphasis on materialistic view and it is kind of negating the change that would take place in the cultural realm so we see that through these perspectives the functional the conflict perspective sociologist made an attempt to understand society from multiple perspective with this i come to an end of this lecture thank you